Hi everyone, it's Carol here, the founder of the Sleep Success Academy. Today I wanted to have a conversation with you about an email I received from a follower um, and the email reads like this. So before we get into what I want to talk about, I want you to know what the email was about. So he replied to an email I had sent out, one of my weekly emails. Um, and if you want to receive my weekly email, just go to sleepsuccessacademy.com and you can actually sign up for my email list there. And there's free resources too that you can download for yourself. But his email read, since I changed my routine by having a set sleep time and a set awake time, and by being more positive about life, things have been improving. And then he goes on to say, thank you for all you do. I'm hoping things will improve even more. And so the first thing I did when I read that email this morning was I actually put my hand on my heart and I sat with this good feeling, right? And I'm sharing that because I want you to start adding moments like that to your day. What does sitting with an email where someone is thanking you for something that you're doing, I find this super easy to do. It's what I love to share with everyone, but I am making change in someone else's life that I don't even know. And so I put my hands on my heart and I allow this emotion, this feeling of goodness really seep into my cells. And that is one way that I, for myself, build some capacity in my nervous system. So my Better Sleep community, that's the first step we look at is the emotional wellness component, which is building the capacity in our nervous system. And we do that by feeling goodness when goodness shows up. So I really wanted to model that for you today because you're going to say, well, Carol, how does like me sitting with my hands on my heart help my sleep? is because then we look at the three emo three components to better sleep, our emotional well-being, our mindset, and our behaviors. So back to the email. So this person has done some behavior change. And so when he says, I have a set sleep time and a set wake up time, he has obviously created a better sleep routine for himself. And we know that the nervous system, that our body, that our, our biology thrives on consistency because it knows what's going to happen next is the same as when we have our small children, when we have babies. So I'm a mom of two. I kept them on a schedule when they were little as best as I could, because I knew if they didn't go to bed by a certain time, they'd be cranky the next day. I made sure they were in bed early enough for school so that they could function better the next day. We understand that with our little ones, but what would it be like for you to do that for yourself? What would it be like for you to say, I am that important and this person did, right? He says, wait a minute, I'm assuming, but this is my take on it. He somehow had a shift that says, if I want better sleep, then I got to do something about it. So he started with changing his behavior, which is great because he, I don't read in that, that he's rigid with his behavior. He just set up a sleep time and an awake time. So probably time to bed, time to be awake. So that's kind of the behavior. But if you listen to what I'm going to say, the second part of the email, he says, and by being more positive about my life, things have been improving. So great. He's really be able to. So my guess is that his nervous system or his lifestyle or his life and the people surrounding him, it is possible for him to be more positive. And he's reinforcing those good positive belief. And then things are improving. Totally awesome. That's me putting my hands on my heart after getting a um, email like this. It makes me like, so, it feels joy. Like you can even see it on my face, right? Like, wow. Like someone actually took the time to reply to one of my emails, letting me know how well he's doing. Makes me want to do more, doesn't it? And how do I then bring that into the rest of my life? So it's that positive mindset of like, this is amazing. And so the last part of his email, he says, and I'm hoping things will improve even more. And so then the only component he hasn't told me about in his email is the emotional well-being. I usually like to start with the emotional well-being when I work with people growing the capacity in the nervous system. 
But again, we have to look at what the root cause is for that person. And acknowledging that if I'm having a down day, it's okay for me to have a down day, but what can I do to support myself through those heavy emotions or through the stress of my day? How am I going to bring in support for myself? And then how do I help my nervous system grow capacity to be able to be able to like have a stressor come in and be able to deal with it without dysregulating so bad that my nervous system needs to shut down or get stuck on in fight or flight. And so when he says, I'm hoping things will improve even more, um, what's exciting when I read this email is, one, he's doing the behaviors that has helped them. He's changed a mindset. Now, what would it be like for him to really focus on his emotional well-being? Um, so I just shared something on my own private Facebook today because I saw, uh, maybe I'll put a picture here of this lady, two ladies, it's a cartoonish. And they're lighting each other's candle. And it says lighting someone else's candle doesn't take away from the light of your candle. And that really made me think again of like, I surround myself with people who light my candle when I need it. I light theirs when they need it. And then I create a new word for myself and I stay away from candle blower outers <laughs> because why would I want to continue to put myself in that energy is not good for my emotional well-being, right? So is there any candle blower outer people, activities, events, jobs, acti like anything? Is there any of those candle blower outers where it drains you? That would be a way to look at your emotional well-being. What can I do to light other people's candles, but at the same time, keep mine lit? And when my candle is blown out because of stress or events, do I have people in my life that can light my candle back? And so that's kind of a one way that my brain is thinking about the emotional well-being this morning. How can I support myself or this person? I'm kind of talking as, as if I'm him. How can he support himself to get more emotional regulation? And he's already got the mindset going. He's got the behaviors going. And this is like the icing on the cake, knowing that there will be days he won't sleep. There'll be days that um, it will be a bigger stressor than what his nervous system can handle. And that's okay because he'll have the tools and he'll the consistency already set in place that it might take him a day or two to manage that stress where before it might totally throw us off track for weeks or months. So that's all I wanted to share today. Um, I do have a free resource on my website, sleepsuccessacademy.com. It's about the three ingredients to better sleep, which are really the three components um, I will put a link here so you can go and get a copy of that free resource. It will actually explain to you more about what each component is. Um, and maybe in there, there'll be some information that you can take for yourself that will actually help you do what this gentleman just did, improve the quality of his sleep without even ever meeting me, but just by listening and integrating the knowledge that I share with all of you. So excited. Uh, my day is going to be awesome today. And I can't wait to chat with you next time. And any question that you have, please contact me support at sleepsuccessacademy.com.